This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. When we made our McDonald's spicy chicken McNuggets, you were praise hands emoji. Then we ran out and you were streaming tears emoji. Now they're back, so you can be grinning face with sweat emoji. Order ahead on the McDonald's app. And get money mouth face emoji with two orders of crispy, irresistible 10-piece McNuggets. Spicy or classic for just $6. Limited time only. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Single item at regular price. A few months ago, journalist Jason Kebler had some friends over to his house. And in the middle of conversation, he went to look something up on the internet, on a search engine. I searched it on Kagi, which is not Google. And they saw my screen and they're like, what the hell is that? Like, what what are you doing? Because they were just, they had never seen the site before, essentially. What is Kagi? Kagi is a Google competitor. It's an alternative search engine and it costs $10 a month to use. And I've been using it for three months. And I have essentially forgotten that I use it because it just works so well. Like I don't even think about it. In my opinion, Jason is one of the best tech journalists working today. He's a co-founder of the independent tech journalism site 404 Media. And his experience trying to get 404's articles picked up on Google is part of his frustration with the search engine. They are not really on Google News, which at previous jobs was a huge driver of traffic for us. And we started noticing that our articles are being scraped by AI and they were being republished on these really like very spammy websites, um, like AI versions of our articles with just like tiny changes. And we were noticing that many of these websites were getting indexed by Google News and were ranking above us on Google. And so we just started writing about how this was happening and, and sort of going down this rabbit hole and realizing that Google is not surfacing results that I wanted to see just as a user. In the story that you wrote about this, there's this sentence that stuck out to me. You say, I'll probably never switch back to Google unless Kagi becomes significantly worse. Or Google reverses years of annoying interface and search decisions that have prioritized ads, sponsored results, spammy affiliate content, and AI-generated result. Do you think it's fair to say that you think Google sucks now? I personally think that Google sucks now. I don't like using it. And I I think a lot of other people feel that way because we've been writing a lot of articles about how Google results are worse or feel like they're getting worse. It feels to me like a frog getting boiled situation where I just used Google without thinking about it for many, many, many years. And then I looked up one day and I was like, I'm not finding any websites that I want to see. If you've had a creeping sense that Google search is getting worse, you're not alone. Today on the show, we're going to explain why. I'm Lizzie O'Leary, and you're listening to What Next TBD, a show about technology, power, and how the future will be determined. Stick around. This podcast is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Most of you listening right now are probably multitasking. Yep, while you're listening, you're probably also driving, cleaning, exercising, or maybe even grocery shopping. But if you're not in some kind of moving vehicle, there's something else you can be doing right now. Getting an auto quote from Progressive Insurance. It's easy, and you could save money by doing it right from your phone. Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save nearly $750 on average, and auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. 
discounts for having multiple vehicles on your policy, being a homeowner, and more. So just like your favorite podcast, Progressive will be with you 24-7, 365 days a year, so you're protected no matter what. Multitask right now. Quote your car insurance at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $744 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2022 and May 2023. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. Apple Card is the perfect cash back rewards credit card. You earn up to 3% daily cash on every purchase every day. That's 3% on your favorite products at Apple, 2% on all other Apple Card with Apple Pay purchases, and 1% on anything you buy with your titanium Apple Card or virtual card number. Visit apple.co slash card calculator to see how much you can earn. Apple Card issued by Goldman Sachs Bank, USA, Salt Lake City branch. Subject to credit approval. Terms apply. I'm going to be upfront. For the last year or so, I've had this kind of inchoate sensation that Google search is getting worse, that my searches were returning more ads or shopping links, but not the actual information that I wanted. But of course, search is so individual. I didn't know if it was just me. Jason says that's what makes this such a thorny issue. Despite the fact that I think that Google sucks now, I think it's like a really hard thing to talk about because everyone's Google results are very different. And that's by design because Google knows so much about you. It is targeting you with ads in a specific way and it's tracking you around the internet and through all of the Google products in a specific way. But I do feel like people have a, a creeping sense that the results that they're getting are worse. And I think that this is not entirely Google's fault. I think that this is a problem that the entire internet is dealing with and a problem that every social platform is also dealing with, which is the rise of AI-generated content is legitimately a hard thing to combat because it has made it really easy for people to just create huge amounts of content uh, that is artificially generated and published on a WordPress blog or published on a website or published on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. And Google is going to index that content in some way. And then it needs to figure out how to rank it in some way. This phenomenon isn't just vibes. It's backed by research. Earlier this year, a group of German researchers released a year-long study titled, Is Google Getting Worse? Their conclusion was mostly, yeah. They analyzed 7,392 different search terms across Google, Bing, and DuckDuckGo over the course of a year. And what they found is, quote, higher ranked pages are on average more optimized, more monetized with affiliate marketing, and they show signs of lower text quality. We find that only a small portion of product reviews on the web uses affiliate marketing, but the majority of all search results do. So this is like just like spammy stuff that wants you to buy things? It is, but a lot of it is coming from what people would probably consider to be high quality websites. Consider this example from the site housefresh.com, which is an independent product review site. It does actual product testing, which adds validity to its reviews. But Google doesn't seem to care about that, as Housefresh outlined in a recent article called, appropriately, How Google is Killing Independent Sites Like Ours. If you do something like search, uh, like best air purifier, you will see that all of the top results are from sites like Forbes or Real Simple or People or Rolling Stone. Like Rolling Stone is recommending air purifiers, which is nominally, you know, a, a music site. And I think that they do fantastic journalism. But because making money in journalism is very difficult and there's only a, a few ways to do it, many sites have started adding a lot of affiliate links. And what these are are just links that go to Uh, like Amazon or places that you can buy anything online. And every time someone buys something through one of those links, they get, you know, a few pennies or sometimes more than that. And so a lot of sites have started 
just like spinning up teams that produce a bunch of content about this sort of thing. And the main argument of this House Fresh article is that a lot of these sites are not actually testing the products that they are recommending. But because these sites have been on the internet for so long, they have a lot of authority with Google. And so they are ranking really high when you search for, for it, even if, even if they're not trying the air purifier, for example. You're getting at this kind of chicken and egg phenomenon, though. Things show up high on Google or any big ad revenue-driven search engine because there's a whole industry of people who know how to make things end up up high. They use search engine optimization to make things, you know, pop up in those results. And it feels like, a, you know, just like a little circle that we're going around in here. I've spent 15 years professionally writing articles for the internet. And at every place that I've ever worked, SEO has been important. And some of this stuff like aligns very well with good journalism. It's like used names of people in right. the article and like link to your sources and things like this. Uh, but then there's also a lot of other things that humans may not like, but Google's algorithm does like, which is, you know, like subtitles. Uh, if you are looking for a recipe, the to get ranked high on Google, you often need the recipe to have a lot of keywords and to have like be of a certain length. And so this is why when you go to a lot of recipe sites, you will often read like a person's life story before they <laughs> before actually you tell you the ingredients. recipe. And I am not, uh, I, I don't write recipes. I don't cook. There, this is like a very controversial topic in the recipe world because some people like that sort of thing, but other people just want to see the recipe. And the reason that all of these sites have, you know, really long stories before they get into the recipe is because they're doing search engine optimization and they're trying to rank higher on Google. Is it just Google or, you know, do Bing and DuckDuckGo or whatever also fall into this trap? Bing and DuckDuckGo do both fall into this trap. Uh, I think that we focus on Google because we use Google. Everyone right. uses Google. And it's like Bing has not really <laughs> taken much of the market. Like if you actually look at the numbers, it's still a couple percentage points of all searches go through Bing. So the vast majority of SEO is targeted at Google's algorithms and Google's web indexing and ranking system. We reached out to Google for comment, and a spokesperson told us that the German study looked narrowly at product review content, and it doesn't reflect the overall quality and helpfulness of search for the billions of queries we see every day. She added that, quote, Numerous third parties have found Google to be of significantly higher quality than other search engines, and our advanced spam fighting systems keep 99% of searches spam free. When we identify areas for improvement, we take that work seriously. When we come back on the show, how AI makes all of this more complicated, because of course it does. This podcast is supported by Tools and Weapons, the podcast hosted by Microsoft Vice Chair and President Brad Smith. Right now on a special edition of Tools and Weapons, Brad Smith is sharing a vision for what Microsoft calls the new AI economy. It's an idea rooted in technological revolutions of the past, like the printing press, which created a vibrant marketplace of related innovations, ultimately leading to an explosion of books and readers. But he doesn't just give a history lesson. In the episode, Brad lays out the tangible ways that Microsoft is providing infrastructure and other support to those leading the charge of the new AI economy. And he explains the importance of using that infrastructure to ensure equitable access to AI to people all over the world. To stay current on insights from voices at the center of the conversation on AI, follow or subscribe to Tools and Weapons with Brad Smith wherever you like to listen. Apple Card is the perfect cash back rewards credit card. You earn up to 3% daily cash on every purchase every day. 
That's 3% on your favorite products at Apple, 2% on all other Apple Card with Apple Pay purchases, and 1% on anything you buy with your titanium Apple Card or virtual card number. Visit apple.co slash card calculator to see how much you can earn. Apple Card issued by Goldman Sachs Bank, USA, Salt Lake City branch. Subject to credit approval. Terms apply. This podcast is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you're driving, cooking, or doing laundry, Progressive knows the podcasts you listen to go best when they're bundled with another activity, much like how their Progressive home and auto policies go best when they're bundled. Having these two policies together makes taking care of your insurance easier and could help you save, too. Customers who save by switching their home and car insurance to Progressive save nearly $800 on average. That's a whole lot of savings and protection for your favorite podcast listening activities, like going on a road trip, cooking dinner, and even hitting the gym. Yep, your home and your car are even easier to protect when you bundle your insurance together. Find your perfect combo. Get a home and car insurance quote at Progressive.com today. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $793 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2021 and May 2022. Potential savings will vary. Well, let's talk about this AI bloat issue. 404, your organization, reported that Google News is boosting some of this weird kind of AI-generated content in its results. Tell me about what you guys found. Yeah. So I have a Google alert for 404 Media. (laughs) So anytime anyone mentions 404 Media, I get an email and a link to it. And soon after we started publishing articles, I kept getting Google alerts from weird sites that I had never heard of that were uh, mentioning or in some cases linking to us. And so we did this like really difficult article about how child sexual abuse material was being included in this really popular AI model uh, that under that underpins like tons of the AI tools that are used today. And this is something that we actually spent like over a year on and talked to a bunch of different researchers about how to even report this because it's so difficult. And one day after we published it, there was an article called they delete a database to train AI generative images to contain child sexual abuse material, which is not even remotely English, uh, on a site called Nation World News, which when I clicked on it, they had just stolen our article, clearly run it through some sort of AI tool, and it had a million ads on it. Hmm. And it was ranking higher than us on Google, and it was indexed by Google News. And our article that we spent all of this time and resources doing was not was not on Google News at all. What does that tell you about what Google is prioritizing, wh- whether consciously or not? Well, I think it tells us that the people who are spinning up these AI spam sites know a lot and care a lot about SEO and what Google is looking for. And we are journalists who are just trying to write articles. We're humans writing articles for other humans, and we are not optimizing every aspect of our article so that an algorithm will pick it up. Uh, But the people who are doing this with AI are optimizing better than us, and Google is rewarding them for that. I think that Google is fighting a very difficult battle here because, I mean, the business model of these AI sites is get listed, get ranked on Google, trick people into clicking, the people leave, but they're shown a bunch of ads before they leave and they collect pennies and hope that, uh, you know, that pays for what they're doing. In response to our questions, the Google spokesperson said, quote, we take the quality of our results extremely seriously and have clear policies against content created for the primary purpose of ranking well on news, and we remove sites that violate it. A lot of these AI sites are based outside the U.S., where it's a lot cheaper to spin up a new website and publish lots and lots and lots of stuff using AI models, something that's basically impossible for humans. Jason's site is run by humans, four of them. And we publish two or three articles a day, and we're very productive journalists. Like, we're incredibly productive journalists. 
but we're competing against AI generated sites that are publishing articles like every two to three minutes, 24 hours a day. Oh my God. And one person is running that probably. uh, And they're just doing it all through AI because they're not actually researching and running the articles. They're just generating them or ripping them off or doing a mix of both. And so Google does prioritize, you know, sites that publish often. And if you're publishing a few hundred articles a day that are AI generated, that that might rank higher than a human run site that is only publishing one or two or three articles a day. Listening to you say all of this, it seems so clear that there's such a strong argument against using Google for search. And yet Google owns this wide swath of the market share for search. Most people are still using it as their default search engine. I don't know if there is a way to untangle that. We already have so many Google products baked into our lives, which makes me wonder, is there some breaking point in which consumers would revolt or are we trapped? I think that we're trapped. Um, despite the fact that I'm using Coggy, it's like Coggy is actually a search engine that aggregates results from a bunch of other search engines and then ranks them. So it's like reliant on Google as well. Wow. And so it's hard to escape even when you're trying to escape. I've tried to escape a bunch of other Google products before because I've reported on Google for a long time and I've looked for alternatives for a long time. I switched from Google Maps to Apple Maps a few years ago and I was biking around New York City using Apple Maps and it tried to put me on the BQE, which is a highway. Oh yeah, that's not and great. And I was like, cool, I'm switching back to Google because Apple Maps tried to kill me. I stopped using Chrome for a while and I was using other browsers. And then I would run into a site that would only work with Chrome that I needed to use. And rather than like run this complicated existence where I was switching back and forth between browsers, I just switched back to Chrome. I can't really imagine leaving Gmail or Google Docs. It's like my entire digital life is sort of intertwined with this company. And I think that's the case for a lot of people. I mean, I'm staring at a Google Doc of prep, you know, notes for this interview that was sent to my Gmail. I'm reading it on Chrome. How did we get so dependent on one company? It was similarly a frog getting boiled situation (laughs) where the products work so well together. It's like a, it's a vertically integrated company where, you know, if you use Gmail, it's like, well, I already have Gmail. I might as well download Chrome. Chrome has, you know, Google built into it. Like it's just easier uh, for for people to do. Uh, At the same time, there is this, gravitational pull that Google has that is not fully organic. It's like Google pays Apple billions of dollars to make Google the default search engine on iPhones, for example. And like a lot of the other sort of tech monopolies that we've seen, a lot of it is sort of like default stuff that happens on devices that you buy. Which the Justice Department has some thoughts about. The Justice Department has some thoughts about And there are various antitrust cases ongoing against many tech giants at the moment. And it sort of remains to be seen what will happen. Uh, I'm skeptical that we'll see any sort of like real breaking apart of these companies. But I also don't know what that looks like at this point. Like, I think that it's pretty difficult to even break them up because they're so intertwined. Like all of the products are so intertwined at this point. Google is facing two big lawsuits from the federal government, one over its search engine, which will continue in May, and another over its ad practices, which goes to trial in September. So let's go back to search, because you keep talking about the frog being slowly boiled in water. And the thing I can't stop thinking about is really this fundamental business model thing. If your business is based on advertising, and Google's is, The people and companies are going to do all sorts of things to end up at or near the top of search. You're going to have AI-driven chum that wants a slice of ad revenue. And so it feels like 
I don't know. There's a pollution of pure search right from the jump, right? This was this was never a empirically satisfying experiment where you would absolutely just get the best search results. Yeah, I mean, SEO has existed forever um, since Google existed. And there's been a couple of really good articles in The Verge that have blamed SEO for essentially ruining the yeah. internet. It, it was never a pure experience. The reason that I left Google and that I've been using Kagi is simply because it's not even that that much of a moral stance, really. It's that I tried this other thing and I was like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm actually finding websites that are interesting and that are relevant to my search. Every time I tried to leave Google, the thing that I tried was worse. And in this case, Kagi, which specifically kind of down ranks the sites you're describing it like analyzes how many ads and how much of a, a site's content is ads and it down ranks them it like punishes hmm. tactics that are traditional search engine engine optimization tactics and i just realized after using it for three months I, I looked up and i was like oh i haven't really like been mad about my search results for a long time I, i'm just like finding the stuff that i want to find and there's not a bunch of sponsor results at the top and there's not an ai that's trying to answer my question when i really just want to find a link so here we are at the you know tail end of this conversation talking about how crappy all this stuff feels and is is there any way to make a change for many years, all the companies that I worked for were incredibly reliant on Google and incredibly reliant on social platforms to reach audiences. And as sort of like the entire internet has become a big algorithm, all of our feeds are algorithmic, it's become a lot harder to reach people through these platforms. Uh, and I think that when you go back to things like direct email to people who have signed up for the email, that is like a human to human interaction person-to-person -person interaction and group texts and things like that, I think have already started to replace a lot of the social networks that we used to use all the time or that we still use all the time, but are increasingly polluted. And I think that the solution is more of a, a like human to human, hey, check this out situation versus scrolling through a feed that is polluted with tons and tons of AI content. Jason, thank you for your reporting and for coming on the show. Thank you. Jason Kebler is a co-founder of 404 Media. He's also the co-host of the 404 Media Podcast, which you should check out. All right, that is it for our show today. What Next TBD is produced by Evan Campbell, Anna Phillips, and Patrick Ford. Our show is edited by Paige Osborne. Alicia Montgomery is Vice President of Audio for Slate, and TBD is part of the larger What Next family. And if you like what we are doing here, the best way to keep us up high in your mental search engine is to become a Slate Plus member. Just head on over to slate.com slash whatnextplus to sign up. All right, we will be back on Sunday with another episode. I'm Lizzie O'Leary. Thanks for listening. Introducing Wondersuite from Bluehost.com, the tool that makes WordPress wonderful for everyone. Website creation is hard, but now with Bluehost, you can answer a few simple questions about your business and goals, and the Wondersuite tools will automatically lay out your WordPress website or store in minutes. Seriously. From there, you can customize your design, pick your brand colors and add blocks, no custom theme or coding required. You'll get content suggestions that you can keep or revise. And with Yoast SEO built in, we automatically help you get found in search engines. From step-by-step -step guidance to suggested plugins to an AI-powered help bot, 
Our built-in tools make WordPress wonderful for everyone. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, you can join over 2 million Bluehost users. Go to bluehost.com slash wondersuite. That's bluehost.com slash wondersuite.